Hi, this evening we're going to talk about consciousness and soul. Consciousness and soul refer to different ideas in different people. But consciousness and soul is the same thing, with soul being a religious concept and consciousness being a scientific assumption. There is arguing, scrapping, and agreeing about soul and consciousness because of the different abstract interpretations. Both words are umbrella imprints that come, cover many different phenomena that have not been labeled or put forward. They both transmit to us wisdom about our essence and the very being of life and how we fit in the universe. They speak to us in over a thousand different ways, some silent, others in symbols, songs, feelings, and intuitions. To hear the voice that doesn't make sounds, we need attention and awareness to set up and activate the vision, awe and wonder, available inside. But we pursue it outside. We search for trinkets externally when our most valuable and miraculous attractions have always been inside, our soul or consciousness. We are liberated, set free in our soul, an uninhibited consciousness that is aware where we are only inadequate and restricted in the mind. Imagine losing the self-centered mind and its reproduction of biological existence in the dark night of the soul. But you uncover the light inside and it carries your sorrow away. Our mind focuses on things and items made known by the light. But the problem is we don't give attention to the light. Nik Nikola Tesla said, my brain is only a receiver. In the universe there is a core from which we obtain knowledge, strength, and inspiration. I have not penetrated into the secrets of this core, but I know that it exists. In our ego mind, we vibrate at a lower frequency under the law of cause and effect, karma, or what Jesus said, you reap what you sow. In our consciousness, we vibrate at a higher frequency in the freedom of our spiritual essence, the light of the soul. Carl Jung said, one does not become enlightened by imagining figures of light, but by making the darkness conscious. We do this with self-discovery and with the help of the universe, where we observe and detach our awareness from what we are not. Our mind detracts, eclipses, and puts itself in the limelight, concealing who we are, really are, the consciousness, the consciousness of the soul. Similar to a cloud covering up the sun, which does not hurt the soul, but it does trouble us with pain, anxiety, and mental suffering. We are not the mind, we are the witness of it. We are an ocean of consciousness, watching our thoughts appear like waves appearing on the ocean. In the perception of the soul, we don't worry or suffer, we just observe the waves rise, fall, and sometimes crash on the shore. No one can hear us, smell us, or hurt us, in the soul, so we are not bothered, interrupted, or encumbered in any way. Therefore, our ultimate reality is bliss. There is nothing to accomplish. We just need to rest in the stillness and love within by just being ourselves, which expands love. We don't lose sleep over our faults and mix-ups, and neither does God, because the soul is pure love, and that is what God wants. In awareness, we observe our mind's ability to disturb, annoy, and get on our nerves by compelling us to think, feel, and do certain actions. When we observe from the awareness of our soul, we do not judge because our soul presents light and love when we are in darkness. We only have to rest and bathe in this awareness to be satisfied. We don't have to eliminate our ego because we just have to stop identifying with it. We observe our thoughts coming and going 
in our in our consciousness, knowing we are not them. The worst thing in us in life is identifying with the ego, but even more troublesome is troublesome is losing contact with the point of view from our consciousness. Our emotions appear when we identify with the ego mind, consume our energy, and make us sick or gloomy. Contact with our soul can make us feel better and look better because we are filled with joy. All spiritual paths lead to unity, light, and love with awareness observing God in every creature and everything created from one consciousness. So we are never separated from God. It is like the sun setting on the beach. I see a path of light across the water directed to the sun, and the person next to me sees a different path of light going to the same sun. The sun represents God, who is a collective consciousness and the totality of everything while love is the path of light across the water that make us uh, aware of the divinity within. Jesus did not come to judge us, form a religion, or preach to us. He came to love us because love, he knows, will show us the way. Our mind helps us understand the physical world that is external to us, while our soul and consciousness help us understand the spiritual world that is inside us. The unconditional love that is inside us is not an emotion that ex expresses itself outside, but a state of being inside and outside. Our mind is always active, but love brings us to our true being in the soul or consciousness, and that being is enough. Our thoughts and moods hold us captive in our mind involved and hypnotized with life, afraid to go beyond the mind to the deep layers of our consciousness. Love help us, helps us to detach from our thoughts and ego identity to become something better than we are. The path of love takes, in, takes us inward where we love and let go, becoming the love that we admire. Love is not a currency where we possess people and things because it means nothing nothing possess because that means nothing possesses us in a healthy love exchange because love is freedom it is real independence a freedom in our perceptions from anxiety fear and nervousness when liberated from the mind fear and attachment we receive love as our greatest joy by directing emotional energy into a love affair with life Love brings us to the highest glory and consciousness on the physical plane. Jesus' main two lessons were about the divinity within and a love that brings us into collective consciousness. In this highest state of love, there is happiness and unity with everything. The ego either vibrates up to this uh, consciousness or vibrates out of it to a lower frequency. We are spiritually awakening when someone hurts us and we want to un understand and learn from the situation instead of hurting them back. Every one of our thoughts and actions create vibrations in our consciousness that prepare us for something better to happen. Our soul is who we are as our guiding light, our path, and our purpose all in one. So being mindful of our thoughts is important. Our thoughts create vibrations that can bring clarity and illumination or shadows that cover the light. If we are not successful in reaching our objective, we don't change our purpose in life, our goal, but we change our thoughts. Our soul is present with, with past and future. But if we focus our mind on the past or future, we miss the present where our future is now. We impair ourselves focusing on the past or future because the present brings the lessons we need to vibrate up to the divinity within. On the soul level of consciousness, love whispers its message to us 
while our ego mind screams it with fear. Trust the love and the divinity within in the present moment and not the dreams of the future or nightmares of the past. The collective consciousness is communicating with us in the universe and with everything around us when we love. Unlike the ego mind, our higher self is integrated with the universe and cosmic consciousness with love, helping us to connect. This love connection is the foundation and starting place for happiness, health, and the strength of unity. Our soul contains and knows everything about us as it is who we really are in the unity of the present with our past and future. We don't have to withdraw from it because that, presents, that, that pre prevents us uh, from being our true self, making us live in multiple worlds, playing multiple ro roles. The inner and outer crumbling in separate personalities runs the risk of losing the perspective from the unity of our true self. As we let others tell us how and what to do. Our soul only wants to be the best we can be in one whole consciousness that benefits our self, family, and community, not living in a divided life. We came into this world as a soul and accumulated many things on the material plane. But when we depart, we are only consciousness. Our greatest obstacle is identifying with the mind. It is not wrong just unconscious. Therefore, observe it from consciousness as it is not a problem. Our mind doesn't know the soul. It knows past, future, time, and labels as it binds us with thoughts. So we dive into consciousness of the, in, the, in the present moment and stop struggling with division. Division is like watering dead plants in ignorance. While unity is viewing ourself in all beings and perceive, perceiving everything in one consciousness. Everything exists in consciousness. So consciousness is everything in a giant force field that even contains the past and future. This collective consciousness responds to our energy, uniting us with, with past thoughts. But we learn from the miscalculations and redirect to a spiritual version of ourself. We do this by using the uh, mental techniques that clear up and clean out the mind, like meditation, to go beyond thought. The secret of these techniques is to bring us to the present moment where we become more aware as we operate from the inside out. This is done by cleansing our anger, disgust, and distrust from the mind. As a result, we make room for love, peace, and happiness. When our mind is at peace, we become aware of the flow, rhythm, and vibrations of the universe and go with it. We open ourselves to freedom, and unity becomes our teacher, as we no longer have to impress anyone. Therefore, the first lesson is to master how to settle down and to remain calm, and this is done in consciousness where we find our truth and what moves our spirit. There are no random acts because one spirit moves through all things. So if we settle down and remain calm in the center, we observe all things accepting their course. So the techniques of meditation, there are many different ones and all the religions have some form of deep contemplation. The Christian mystics taught it, the Buddhists teach it, the Hindus teach it, a, Jew, a Jewish religion in the Torah they, teaches it, and they're all different ways, but they all re go to the same place. So we have to first know our personality and what techniques best suit us to calm us down so we can feel the unity of everything in one. Thank you.